Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And here I'm taking a look at the API 525 compressor. In the previous video in the series, I took the schematic and did a bunch of editing on it to try to simplify it. I would suggest you go check that out. Here I'm starting with the full original schematic, largely because I apparently somehow lost the file that had my edited version of the schematic. As with the last lecture, this isn't going to be as polished as one of my usual lecture videos that I do for one of my actual classes, but let's try to have some fun anyway. Before I look at the gain structure of the compressor, I want to take a moment and approximate the input impedance. So the signal comes in here, it hits R1, it goes through R2, and then it eventually keeps going through here and then goes through this 120 ohm resistor to ground. Now, I'm going to assume that the op amp is ideal. Of course, it's not one of the fun of something like a 2520 op amp is that it's a discrete op amp with all sorts of interesting properties. But here I'm just going to assume that it is ideal, so no current is flowing through the positive terminal here. I'm also going to assume that there's negligible current flowing through the base, so I'll ignore all of this stuff here. The PMP transistor here is basically acting as a voltage buffer. It's an emitter follower. And what it's doing is it's taking some of the input signal and it's adding that signal to the control signal that's coming out of the side chain of the compressor to the gate of the JFET. So the JFET here is the gain control element. And I think they're doing this in order to try to linearize the response of the JFET a little bit, but I haven't really thought about that in a, a whole lot of detail. Now, there is another potential path here that we need to worry about. It comes up here, goes over here, comes down through here. And now it gets a little bit complicated. If the compressor is set in off mode, it comes up here through the switch like this. And then it's going to see this 62K resistor and then go to ground. Now, if the compressor is switched on, you don't have that path. One thing that I should point out is that the off mode is not the same as a true bypass mode that's in the API 525 reissues that you can get from API now. And that's not present in the original API 525s. So if you have the AP525 in this off mode, all of this stuff is still in the circuit. Now, if the compressor is actually on, then this path that I drew in purple, well, that's just disconnected entirely. So I have two potential cases to worry about in terms of what the input impedance is, one where there's the 62K resistor and one where this isn't even here at all. So I've pulled up Octave here to use as the world's most overly complicated overkill calculator. And let's see, if I don't have this purple path, then I'll have 10K input impedance in series with 180 plus 120. So that's 10 kilo ohms plus 180 ohms plus 120 ohms. So technically speaking, that's 10.3 kilo ohms input impedance. Most people would probably just approximate that as 10K because that 10K is a whole lot bigger than the 300 ohms you get from adding the R2 and R3 together here. Now, what about the case where the circuit is in off mode? Well, in that case, the 300 ohms that you have here is in parallel with the 62K to ground here. So you have 300 ohms to ground in parallel with 62K to ground. So I could write that as 300 times 62K divided by 62K plus 300. And not surprisingly, that's awfully close to 300 ohms. So I got 298.56. So essentially you could say that the input impedance is around 10K and the change that you get from being in compressed mode versus being in off mode isn't really significant here in terms of the input impedance. And in general, you would just say the input impedance is 10K. It's dominated by R1. And any variations you might get 
from, say, ignoring these other resistors, or for that matter, the input impedance associated with the op amp, whatever finite input impedance that is, and whatever is happening concerning current flowing through the base of the BJT here, those just aren't important. And they're probably on the order of whatever the tolerance on this 10K resistor is anyway. So we'll say the input impedance is 10K. Next time, we'll start to look at the actual gain structure of these op amps. And then finally, we'll try to tackle the side chain and figure out what's going on there. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm just approximating this DC blocking cap as a short circuit. And I've also assumed that this very tiny capacitance here, this 47 picofarad, only kicks in and is important at really high frequencies. So I've ignored that as well, treating it as an open circuit.